Welcome to the Chemistry 209 Masterclass series. This series of lectures is intended to highlight the key concepts of introductory spectroscopy and structure. This lecture, Masterclass 14, is the final lecture in our Masterclass series. Here we will discuss the concept of nuclear spin coupling. The exact frequency at which a nucleus resonates depends on its magnetic environment. We saw in Masterclass 13 that the cycling of electron density influenced the effective magnetic field experienced by a given nucleus. This led to the concept of shielding and deshielding, or chemical shift. The effective magnetic field experienced by a nucleus also depends on its local magnetic environment. If the nucleus of interest is adjacent to another nuclear magnetic moment, this adjacent magnetic environment can influence the effective magnetic field. For example, consider the proton decoupled carbon-13 NMR spectrum of fluoroacetic acid. The I equals one-half fluorine nuclear magnetic moment can either be aligned with the applied magnetic field or against the applied magnetic field. If aligned with, the fluorine nucleus slightly reinforces the applied field, whereas the applied field is slightly reduced if the fluorine nuclear magnetic moment is aligned against. Carbon atoms in molecules with a spin-up fluorine therefore experience a slightly increased effective magnetic field. So their spin states are further separated and transition frequencies shift accordingly. Carbon atoms in molecules with a spin-down fluorine, on the other hand, experience a decreased effective magnetic field, resulting in a slight decrease in their transition frequencies. As a consequence of nuclear spin coupling between the fluorine and carbon atoms, the carbon NMR signals have been split into two lines. This splitting pattern is known as a doublet. The doublet lines are symmetric about the original chemical shift position, and the separation between lines gives the value of the NMR coupling constant, J. NMR splitting patterns can be represented with tree diagrams. The top row of a tree diagram represents the resonant frequency in the absence of spin coupling. Coupling with each interacting nucleus is then shown in subsequent rows of the diagram. In the case of our spin 1 half fluorine coupling, one vertical line is drawn to the left of the original uncoupled line, thus representing the high frequency shift. A second vertical line is then drawn to the right to represent the low frequency shift due to spin coupling. The diagram connectivity shows the coupling relation. We can also show the effect of spin coupling by using an energy level diagram. If we apply a magnetic field to our sample, nuclear magnetic moments that are aligned with the external field are lowered in energy, while those aligned against the external field are raised in energy. It is the transition from the spin up to spin down state that we measure with NMR. Now consider the effect of an adjacent fluorine nuclear spin magnetic moment on the original spin up carbon-13 atom. If the adjacent fluorine nuclear spin reinforces the applied field, the original spin-up state is further stabilized energetically. If, on the other hand, the adjacent nuclear spin reduces the applied field, the original spin-up state is slightly destabilized. For the original carbon-13 spin-down state, the exact opposite is true. An adjacent fluorine spin-up nucleus raises the carbon-13 spin-down state energy whereas an adjacent spin-down fluorine nucleus lowers this spin state's energy. Notice, however, that the spin coupling for both of the original carbon spin states is identical. If we now consider the transition between carbon spin states within a given magnetic environment, we see that the molecules with a spin-down fluorine have transitions at lower frequency relative to the uncoupled transitions, and molecules with a spin-up fluorine have transitions at higher frequency. These transitions are both shifted by one half J from the original uncoupled transition frequency. NMR splitting patterns provide an excellent means of deducing molecular structure. Be aware though that sometimes splittings are not observed when they might otherwise be expected. In spin decoupled spectra, nuclear spin couplings are removed by irradiating the sample so as to average adjacent magnetic environments to zero. Proton decoupling is often employed in carbon-13 NMR to simplify spectra. We must also keep in mind that sometimes the nuclei that we are interrogating, like carbon-13 for example, have very low natural abundance. As a result, it is statistically very unlikely for two carbon-13 nuclei to be in close enough proximity in a molecule to interact with one another. Finally, while nuclei that are in the same environment do interact with one another, the interaction does not result in spectral splitting. For example, 
the adjacent carbon-13 atoms in carbon-13 enriched oxalic acid do not yield a doublet in the carbon-13 NMR spectrum. The reason behind this lies in molecular symmetry and quantum mechanical selection rules. If we consider the energy level diagram of the oxalic acid carbon-13 NMR transition, we can include spin coupling as we did just a minute ago. In this case though, because both atoms are identical by symmetry, it is not clear whether we are describing the energy levels of atom 1 being influenced by the magnetic moment of atom 2, or vice versa. Instead, we must think of the atoms as either a spin-symmetric pair or a spin-antisymmetric pair upon exchange. NMR transitions occur between spin-symmetric energy levels or spin-antisymmetric energy levels. Consequently, while the energy levels are indeed split by spin-coupling interactions, the resulting transitions occur at precisely the same frequency as the original transition in the absence of spin-coupling. When spin coupling occurs with multiple nuclei, tree diagrams become very useful. For example, consider the spin coupling interactions for the two carbon atoms and the fluorine atom in carbon-13 enriched fluoroacetic acid. Here, the transition for carbon number one is split into a doublet by carbon number two, and each of the doublet lines are further split into doublets by interaction with the fluorine atom. The resulting splitting pattern is known as a doublet of doublets. Owing to the fact that the fluorine atom is two bonds away from carbon number one, it doesn't interact as strongly as does carbon number two. We signify bond separation for the interaction with a superscript on the coupling constant. Thus, while carbon number one exhibits a 2J coupling to the fluorine nucleus, carbon number two exhibits a 1J coupling. The NMR signal for carbon number two is therefore also split into a doublet of doublets, but in this case the separation between multiplet components is larger owing to the greater interaction with the fluorine center. Note that patterns such as these are not limited to spin coupling with different elements. Similar splitting patterns can be seen for interaction with two protons in two different chemical environments. If a nucleus is instead spin coupled to two equivalent nuclei, the interaction is such that a triplet pattern is produced. This can be considered a special case for a doublet of doublets, wherein the two central transitions have overlapped due to the identical spin coupling interactions. As a result, the relative intensities for the multiplet components of a triplet are 1 to 2 to 1. We can also think about this from an alignment standpoint. For two equivalent nuclei, there is one spin arrangement that can lead to an increased effective magnetic field, two spin arrangements whereby the effective field is unchanged, and one spin arrangement that leads to a decreased effective magnetic field. We find that multiplet intensities arising from coupling to chemically equivalent I equals one half nuclei follow Pascal's triangle. This is especially useful for proton NMR, where large numbers of hydrogen nuclei can potentially spin couple. In general, N equivalent nuclei with spin I split a transition into two N I plus one lines. Intensity patterns for nuclei with I greater than one half are better predicted by constructing an appropriate tree diagram. Typically though, we will not be concerned with spin coupling for nuclei with I greater than one half since these species undergo rapid spin relaxation and their effects are often not observed. One common exception to this rule, however, is deuterium, which has I equal to 1. Here we will finish our introduction to spectroscopy and structure. I hope you have found these masterclasses useful. Good luck with your future studies.